Hey guys, it's Ed. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today I have a question for you. What do you get if you take a brioche-like dough and add a ton of chocolate to it? Yes, today I'm going to show you how to make a crazy delicious babka. So to make the babka, you're going to need three things. You need a brioche-like dough, the chocolate filling, and then the sugar syrup to make it really beautiful and moist. Now, I make my uh, brioche doughs normally the day before and put them in the fridge. So we have one ready to go, but to make it, it's very, very straightforward. So what you're going to do is you're going to take some plain flour and add that to the bowl. I use plain flour just because I think it gives a softer, more tender finish, but you can use bread flour if you want as well. To that, we're going to add some dried yeast and some salt and then a little bit of sugar because the sugar just helps the uh, brioche to rise really nicely, it helps to give the yeast something to eat, but also it just gives a little sweetness to the dough as well. To that, we're then going to add some full fat milk and three large eggs and that's what gives it that characteristic uh, richness that brioche has. Then gonna mix that together for about 10 minutes on low, medium speed in a mixer. You can do this by hand, but trust me, it's a little trickier and it's very messy and very sticky. So I much prefer doing it in my KitchenAid. Let that go for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's no longer sticking to the side of the bowl. It will take a while because this is a really rich dough, so it does take a little bit of work. Once it's been going for 10 to 15 minutes, you can then add the butter. And the butter should be at a nice room temperature, just a little bit soft. And we're gonna mix that in. Once that's all combined and butter has disappeared into the dough, we still need to let it go for another 10 or so minutes. And that's because when we add the butter, we need to bring back that elasticity in the dough. So once it's clearing the bowl again, we can take that out. Uh, and to test that it's done, there's a really nice little trick and it's called the window pane test. So what you need to do, is just take a small bit of dough and stretch it out and if you can kind of see through it, if the light is shining through it, almost like a sheet of very fine paper, then it's good to go. So place that into a lightly oiled bowl, form it into a ball of dough, cover it in cling film and refrigerate that overnight. You can actually leave it in there for up to two to three days. So once the dough has risen and you've got it chilling in the fridge, we can get on with our filling. The ingredients for the filling are really simple. So all we're gonna need is some unsalted butter, some cocoa powder, some light brown sugar, dark chocolate, and then a little bit of sea salt. And then when we go to fill the babka, we're also gonna use these delicious green pistachios. But you can use any nuts that you prefer. Now, over the years, I have made many, many babka recipes and I love my dough recipe, but I've never found a filling that's better than the one by Ottolenghi in his book, Jerusalem. It's just the best, so we're gonna use a very slightly tweaked version of that today. So the filling is very, very easy. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take some unsalted butter, add that to a saucepan, along with our chocolate, and then the sugar, and then the cocoa powder as well. And we're just gonna put that over a low heat and stir it until it's melted. But we can't forget a good pinch of sea salt just to balance out the sweetness. So as this cooks, just be very careful, keep the heat nice and low and stir it all the time because there's a chance the chocolate will catch and burn. So just be really careful at this stage. Now it's easier if you let this filling cool a little bit, it'll just make the finished babka when we form it a little easier to handle. So whilst that's cooling, we're gonna chop our pistachio. So I'm using these vibrant green pistachios because they make a delicious filling and they're really pretty and colorful, but you can use any nut you want. One of my favorites to make is a pecan babka. I also love the classic hazelnut, but basically whatever nut that you prefer. So all we're gonna do is chop these just a little roughly to break them up a little bit, and then we can get on with our dough. So for this recipe, it's gonna make two loaves of babka. So you're gonna need two loaf tins, nine by four inches, just lightly greased with a little bit of oil, and then with a strip of parchment, which just means you'll be able to lift it out a lot easier. Now, don't worry, you'll be able to freeze these loaves. So whilst you only probably want one straight away, it freezes brilliantly. So don't worry, you'll have one in the back ready for you whenever you want. 
So to form our babkas, we're going to take our dough. Now, as I said, this makes two loaves. So what we're going to do is we're going to tip it out onto our work surface and divide it equally in two. You can weigh this if you want, but I actually find just doing it by eye is absolutely fine. So just press that down, knock out the air, and then we're going to form that into two pieces. And I'm just going to put one back in the bowl just for the moment whilst we work on the other one. So what we need to do is roll this dough out to about a 40 by 30 rectangle. So I try and get it started in a nice rectangle shape to make the rolling out a little easier when we start. We're then just going to lightly flour the surface and the dough itself and then roll that out. So as you're working, if the dough starts to stick, just make sure you're moving it regularly. Make sure you lift it off the surface. If it feels a little sticky, just add a little bit more flour underneath. But the key to having it not sticky is moving the dough regularly. So as you roll it, just maneuver it around a little bit. So once the dough is rolled out, we're just gonna use a sharp knife just to trim it down so we've got nice, even, sharp edges, which just makes forming the babka a little easier. And then we're gonna take our chocolate mixture, we're gonna pour half of it over the dough and then just spread that out into a nice even layer. Just leaving about a centimetre or two at the edge nearest you clear which just means it will be easier to seal the babka at the end and then we're going to sprinkle over the pistachios, half of the pistachios all over that chocolate mixture. And then all you're going to do is roll that into a nice tight log and then I'll show you how to form it after that. So once the dough is formed into our nice roll, we're going to use a very sharp knife to cut it straight through the middle, like this, and just run your knife along so it's cut all the way through, and then when it opens up like this, you'll get this nice piece like this, and if the dough, if the filling's at the right temperature, you'll get this nice stuck together mixture. Then all we're going to do is take one piece, fold it over the top into a cross, and then we're going to braid that. So simply twist the ends together like that, and then the same with the other side like that. And then just gently kind of smush it together a little bit. So then we're going to take our tin and just carefully lift that up into the mold like that, cover it in cling film, set that side for about an hour and a half until that has doubled in size. So after about an hour and a half, the babka should be ready for the oven. It will have risen really nicely. But the way to tell it's actually done is if you gently press on the dough, it should spring back really, really slowly. But also, when you press it, it should feel like it's full of air and you're almost deflating a little bit. So that's going to go into an oven that's been preheated to 180 degrees Celsius or 160 on a fan oven. And they're going to go in for about 30 to 35 minutes until the tops of the babkas are a nice golden brown. So whilst the babka is in the oven, we can make the syrup. Now, the reason we're going to do a syrup is it helps give that characteristic slight stickiness to the outside, but also helps keep the middle really nice and moist. Because it's such a thin roll of bread, the bread can possibly dry out a little bit. So this just helps to make sure we get a really beautiful loaf. So all we're going to need is some caster sugar and a little bit of water. And we're just going to basically bring that to a simmer and as soon as the sugar inside has dissolved and you can't see any grains anymore, you can stop and turn the heat off. So when our babkas come out of the oven, they'll be really nice and golden. And what we can do now is take our syrup and just brush that liberally all over the cakes. So 
So all you need to do now is leave those to cool fully before you slice into them. If you slice into any bread whilst it's still really hot, it'll be dense and doughy, so let it cool fully. If you are gonna freeze the second loaf, Again, wait till it's fully cool, then wrap it in a couple of layers of cling film and then one in foil. Pop it into the freezer and it will keep there for a couple of months. When you come to defrost it, leave it inside of its packaging and leave it on the counter till it's defrosted fully and that way the condensation will form on the outside of the foil rather on the bread itself. Okay, enough talking, let's try it. So the finished babka is this delicious swirl of rich buttery bread, dark chocolate and a ton of pistachios. It's a really fun recipe to make. Yes, it takes a little bit of time and effort, but it is well worth it. You get two amazing loaves of babka, and it's just delicious. As always, the recipe is up in the corner, and if you wanna leave me a like, I would appreciate that very much. And if there's anything you want me to make in an upcoming video, just leave me a comment down below, and I will get on it. Pretty good.